Oh, that's an interesting modern deck. So Fires of Invention using, whoa, Savor the Moment and Mystic Sanctuary in modern. I guess this is trying to do taking turns, but how's it win? Has this ever happened to you? Looking at a cool modern deck, but not sure how it works? Holy crap, Ben, how did you get in my office? You scared the hell out of me. We've been here. For days. Weeks. Months. And we have seven ways to show you how to beat decks in modern. And then you'll, you know, leave my office? As far as you'll know. Good enough, let's get started. Now, Prof, the deck you were talking about is a deck that we are referring to as Inventing Turns. It's a deck that's using the ability of Fires of Invention to play extra turns cards, specifically Savor the Moment that doesn't care about your untapped step. Now, you're combining that with Renin Six and Mystic Sanctuary to cast it over and over and over again by putting those cards on top of your library. In the end, once you've taken all of the turns in the world, you win with powerful Planeswalkers like the aforementioned Renin Six or a card like Jace the Mind Sculptor. This is a really exciting and really, really cool way to use the card run in six, which obviously has been dominating in modern for the last year. Now, if you want to have a good understanding of the modern format, a great place to start is Junt. The way Jun generally wins is by reducing their opponent's resources while applying threats that are quick and aggressive and making sure that opponent doesn't have an ability to stop them from winning the game. Generally, this is done on turn one by casting something like a Thoughtseize or Inquisition of Kozilek. Turn two, casting a threat such as Goyf. On turn three, casting the Planeswalker, Liliana of the Veil. On turn four, casting a Bloodbraid Elf or another aggressive threat that then allows you to gain card advantage by cascading into something such as the new Elder Titan Kroxa, Lightning Bolt, or Golgan's Command, making them discard, killing one of their threats, or rebuying maybe a creature that they were able to get rid of or remove. Eventually, through value, you're able to make it so they do less and you kill them with your threats like Tarmogoyf. Now, while a deck like John is getting lots and lots of value on a card for card basis. The next deck I'm gonna talk about is a deck that is often referred to as Titan Field. Originally, this deck was popularized by the land Valakut that would just instant win, kill your opponent. But really the thing you're gonna win with here is Primeval Titan. The most important card in any version of these decks is Amulet of Vigor, because Amulet of Vigor allows your lands to come in untapped when they should in fact be tapped. When you're using bounce lands, the original Ravnica lands in this situation, it means that you can put one into play, it automatically untaps and retaps for two mana, and you can do it multiple times in a turn using cards like Azusa Lost But Seeking or a new card like Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Eventually, you're gonna put lots and lots of lands into play, have a primeval titan, and be able to attack for tons and tons of damage with tons and tons of value because of all the extra lands you've put into play, even early in the game with a card like Abrael Glazer or a Sakura Tribe Scout. There are different versions of these decks, but they all rely on the same principles, which is lots of lands and primeval titan. Next, we're going to be talking about Stoneblade, maybe my favorite deck in the format. This deck was recently unlocked in the format when the unbanned Stoneforge Mystic. What this deck allows you to do is on turn two, cast a Stoneforge Mystic, finding either a Batter Skull or a Sword of Feast and Famine. Then on turn three, you can cast a card like Teferi, which will then prevent your opponent from interacting with what you're doing or bounce a threat that they may be put into play. On turn four, you can then follow that Teferi up with a Jace the Mind Sculptor, once again, bouncing this threat that they keep trying to keep in play. And then from that point onward, using your Planeswalkers to control the game and counter magic, preventing your opponent from beating you like Cryptic Command, you can win the game by attacking with the equipment you found with Stoneforge Mystic. It's a classic strategy and the one that we played a lot back in the day that has translated into modern. Now, one of my favorite decks in all of modern and a deck that's close to my heart is Death's Shadow. Grixis is probably the most popular version. It feels very similar to playing a Teamer Delver deck in Legacy. You're essentially trying to protect one great big threat. And in this case, the namesake card is Death's Shadow. Now with Death's Shadow, you need to make sure your life total is low. So on turn one, you're gonna cast a Thoughtseize to rip apart your opponent's hand, also losing two life. Probably you will have used a Fetch Land and a Shock Land to take three more life. Now as your life total is getting lower, you're making sure to carefully, carefully control the tempo of the game so you'll be able to resolve a giant threat like the aforementioned Death Shadow or a huge creature like a Gurmag Angler. You're filling your graveyard with cards like Thought Scour, and in the end, you are protecting the threat with a card like Stubborn Denial. At the end of the day, if the game goes long, you're gonna be able to win using something like a Snapcaster Mage, chaining Kologon's Command, just making sure you're staying one step ahead of your opponent with tempo. But ultimately, you will win the game probably with the Death Shadow. So next we have a newer deck in the format, but something that has been doing a lot of powerful things in the last year, and that is the Wurza decks. This takes advantage of Urza, 
recently printed in Modern Horizons, and War of Invention, one of the better artifact tutors currently in Magic. How the deck wins is early in the game, it uses discard effects like Thoughtseize, similar to Jund, to eat apart their opponent's hands, making sure that they can't interact as they kind of put off their combo. Then, during their second and third turns of the game, they play as many artifacts as possible, including Arkham's Astrolabe, Mishra's Bobbles, and the key pieces to the combo, Thopter Foundry, and Sword of the Meek. Then, once they have an Urza in play and both pieces of the combo, which they have found with the tutors or have just played naturally, they are then able to sack the equipment, Sword of the Meek, to create a 1-1 Thopter. They can then tap that Thopter to produce a mana to then sack the Sword of the Meek, which was returned when the 1-1 Thopter was created, going infinite, creating infinite 1-1 Thopters. That allows them to either win the game by attacking, and if their opponent tries to interact with them, they can use Urza's secondary ability, which allows them to cast a random card off the top of their deck, but since they have infinite mana, they can ta cast any amount of cards they want until they hit one of their counter spells. It's a pretty potent strategy, and if I could play seven counter spells in one turn most of the time, I think I would. Uh, though this is a deck that doesn't play any counter spells, and this is Tron. This is a deck that harkens back to the original modern Pro Tour. Uh, obviously, back then it was Locust Lands, today it's Tron. On turn one in Tron, the point is to play one of your 12 pieces of the Tron land. So let's say it's Urza's Mine. You cast an Expedition Map. On turn two, you say, play a second piece of the Tron Trio. Then you activate the Expedition Map off of those two lands, searching for the third piece of Tron, which you then play on the third turn of the game. Now, on turn three, you have access to seven mana, which allows you to cast something like Karn Liberated, which is a really powerful card that allows you to just crush your opponent. The great thing about this deck is that because now every single land in your deck is probably worth two to three mana, or at least the high percentage of your lands are, just about everything you draw is going to be totally backbreaking. So Worm Coil Engines and Ugins are going to be the way you win the game in the end. It's a pretty simple strategy, but pretty darn powerful. The next deck we're going to talk about is Dredge. This is based on the Dredge mechanic from original Ravnica that allows you to, instead of drawing a card, put a card that's in your graveyard into your hand and then put the Dredge number on that card of cards from the top of your deck into your graveyard. This this ostensibly allows you to draw almost five cards a turn versus one card a turn with a card like Stinkweed Imp. And so the way that the game normally starts is you cast the adventure part of Merchant of the Veil, discarding Stinkweed Imp, putting it into your graveyard, and then using the draw trigger to dredge five cards, hopefully putting additional dredge creatures into your graveyard. Then on your second turn, you cast Cathartic Reunion. This allows you to then trigger the dredge effects of the additional cards in your graveyard, milling more cards into your graveyard, hopefully cards like Prized Amalgams, Creeping Chill, Blood Ghast, and Narco Amoebas, allowing you to build a pretty sizable army just on the second turn of the game, doing significant damage to your opponent and killing them. Now, while this dread strategy may not be as powerful as the old Grave Troll days, it's still pretty good and still able to knock people off their rocker. The next deck we're gonna talk about is a fan favorite, Infect. The creatures you're probably going to win the game with are likely Glistener Elf or maybe Blighted Agent, or you might even win with Ink Moth Nexus, which is one of the more powerful lands of all time. This combined with the extra mana early of a Noble Hierarch and tons and tons of pump spells in the vein of Vines of Vastwood, Groundswell, or Might of Old Crosa, is trying to get the power of your creature up to 10, because infect damage only matters when you get your opponent to 10 infect or poison. So, if you can plus up a 1-1 to 10 power and hit them once with it, you're gonna win the game. That's how the infect deck works. The deck is also stocked with protection spells like Blossoming Defense, or the second half of, as I mentioned, Vines of Vastwood, to make sure if your opponent tries to interact with you, you can stave them off. The trick your opponent needs to get into is interacting with your creature while it's there their turn, which means you're not attacking, and in fact you're spending pump spells or protection spells in a turn that it shouldn't matter for you to actively attack them and win with. It's a pretty simple deck, it only has one game plan, but that game plan works most of the time. Uh, you guys forgot Merfolk. <laughs> Merfolk never wins. Actually, with two GP wins and more than half a dozen top eight finishes, Merfolk has better competitive results than most decks currently being played in Modern. That's not... Right, is it? Actually, it is. Get the hell out of my office! Special thanks to this video's editor, Jonathan Choi, and thanks as well to my uninvited guests, the Masters of Modern. You can check out their modern podcast back at their actual house, which comes in both video and audio form, and I will link to that podcast in this video's description. If you love modern as much as I do, I cannot recommend the Masters of Modern enough, so go check them out.
oh, hang on, hang on. I'm, get, I'm getting a notification here. There's yet another Masters set this year. We're having triple Masters sets. This is called New Player Masters. It's meant to be a master set that is new player friendly. So, so what does that entail? It says here it will be reprints of commons and uncommons from the last two years. It's $19.99 a pack. Wait, so at least we get like Evolving Wilds in that set? No, it says no fetch land reprint. That's just boilerplate at this point. They don't want any uh, confusion that maybe they've reprinted the most in-demand reprint in the reprint premium set. Better to be safe yeah, than yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 definitely.